Today, we are going to do some problems on our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Last class, we have seen the theory and the determination of eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors. Now, let's do a couple of problems. Let's uh, understand how to find eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors given a matrix A. So let's re recap the procedure. So the, it's a two-step process. One, step one, given a matrix A, form the characteristic equation that A minus lambda is equal to zero, find its roots and its roots call the eigenvalues. Step two, for each eigenvalue, plug in each eigenvalue into the homogeneous system, A minus lambda into X equal to zero, and you get the eigenvectors. So basically it depends upon the solution of a homogeneous system. So you should be very comfortable how to solve a homogeneous system, right? We have seen that in our earlier units and earlier classes, right? Let's take an example. Find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix A equal to one minus one, two and so on and so on. So what's the step one? Form the characteristic equation. What's the characteristic equation? That a minus lambda equal to zero. That is, form the determinant, right? That is, uh, you need to subtract lambda from the diagonal elements. That is, a one minus lambda, one, two, and so on, so forth, equal to zero. Now, if you expand this uh, determinant, it leads to your cubic equation. That's a simple job you can do. And you have to find its roots. You can find its roots to your synthetic division or factorization or whatever, right? Its roots are lambda equal to one, two, three. So we call these as the eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues of this matrix A are one, two, three. They're all distinct. There's no rule that they should be distinct always. There are umpteen number of examples where the roots are repeated. One is repeated twice. All the three are repeated. And uh, two are real. One is a complex. Whole lot of combinations uh, come into your picture. And basically that gives the spectrum. Spectrum of that uh, uh, matrix A. Now, now let's see how to find the eigenvectors corresponding to each lambda. So we have to solve the homogeneous system, a minus lambda into x equal to zero, put lambda equal to one, right? Then, uh, then this is the homogeneous system, right? Plug in that one, meaning you have to subtract one from the diagonal elements, then the system gets reduces to this way. Now, if you write its uh, equivalent uh, system, then we can bring this system as minus x1, sorry, 0x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 equal to 0. Uh, 0x1 and x2 minus x3 equal to 0. And last one says 2x3 equal to 0. And you can clearly see that the last two rows, row vectors, they're redundant because uh, uh, R3 is a linear combination of an R2. Uh, right? I mean, I can make this zero, right? Or one row will become a zero. What I want to say is end of the day, rank of this matrix is two, right? And uh, total number of variables are three. The rank is two. So we can take uh, one variable as a free variable, right? And we'll express all the variables in terms of that free variable. And uh, we take that free variable as arbitrary constant in future. So, we can see that uh, uh, here, uh, to x3 equal to zero, I mean x3 is zero. If I plug it into the second equation here, then you get x2 equal to zero. And, uh, Now, 
So x2 dies, x3 dies. So what's the other option left? x1. So I need to take x1 as an arbitrary constant, right? So I'll take x1 as a k or k1 or whatever, right? So I'll speak everything in terms of x1. Now, x1 can be spoken in terms of x1 as x1 equal to x1. x2 can, can be written as 0x1 in this case. x3 can be written as 0x3 in this case. Right? So finally, the eigenvector I get is, I call this eigenvector x1, capital X1, corresponding to lambda equal to 1. I can write the solution vector as x1 equal to 1, 0, 0 times or k1, k1 times 1, 0, 0. k1 is arbitrary constant. I can take any value I like to, I can give any value I like to k1. I can give it finite number of uh, values, right? thereby it gives a whole bunch of uh, eigenvectors. That bunch I call eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to 1. Right? Similarly, you take lambda equal to 2, solve the homogeneous system a minus lambda i into x equal to 0. If I take a capital X2 as the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 2, then the coefficient matrix is A minus 2i, meaning you have to subtract lambda from the diagonal elements, right? Then you get this uh, coefficient matrix, right? And uh, you can clearly see here uh, two, these two rows are uh, one and same, right? So the rank of this matrix is, uh, rank of this matrix is, uh, so I can take one free variable. So here you can see x2, x3 is 0 and uh, I take here x2 as the free variable meaning x2 I can take it as an arbitrary constant so I'll try to express everything in terms of x2 right. So uh, x3, I can write it as a, a 0, k2, x2 is x2, and x1 is x2, they are one and same, so x1, I can write it as a k. So finally, if I write a solution vector, my solution vector here is x2 equal to 1 minus 1, 0, or k2 times 1 minus 1, 0, where k2 is an arbitrary constant. That leads to the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to 2. Similarly, you take lambda equal to 3, uh, sorry, lambda equal to 3, plug into this homogeneous system, take the coefficient matrix, right? Rank of A equal to 2, right? Uh, everything has to be expressed in one free variable. I take uh, x2 as a free variable. There is no rule that you should, you should take x2 as a free variable. You are wish. You can take a, for a practice, why can't you take x1 as a free variable and see what happens, right? Then you get an eigenspace, right? How many vectors will be in there in, in that eigenspace? Whole bunch, infinitely many. And for our practical purpose, I need to pick one, one, one vector from that infinitely space vector. To pick that vector, usually we take a K3 as a 1. No rule again. You can take a half, 3 by 2, or whatever number you want. Life will be easy with K3 equal to 1. So an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 3 is 3 minus 2, 2. Right? So to consolidate everything at one place. So the uh, what we have done is we want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. Step one, we are taking the characteristic equation that a minus lambda equal to zero that led to a polynomial, a cubic polynomial. And we got the three roots, lambda equal to one, two, three. They're all distinct. And uh, we have solved the homogeneous system, a minus lambda equal to zero by plugging in lambda equal to one, lambda equal to two, lambda equal to three. And uh, the solution, Corresponding to these three 
eigenvalues, lambda equal to one, two, three are given by this, 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 right up here. And I need to pick one from that. So I'll take K1 equal to one, K2 equal to one, K3 equal to one. That pops out. Uh, one, zero, zero is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to one. Three minus two, two is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to two. And one minus one, zero is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to three, right? Uh, right. Tomorrow we'll see what does these three vectors represent in future. And this gives the spectrum of that matrix. And this gives the corresponding eigenvectors uh, corresponding to lambda equal to one, two, three. Right? That's how we find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. This is a general matrix. Right? Uh, we love symmetric matrices. It has some specialities. We'll see in future uh, why we love symmetric matrices and what are the specialities associated with that uh, symmetric matrix in the coming videos. Now, you should be very comfortable with the hand calculation of uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a given matrix. Right? 